should come to my head, my head, my head, my head. You should come to my head, my head, my head. Jerusalem, I call on me. And then afterwards, Danielle's like, yeah, call the man. Like, see, Let's like, call the man. I said, check the check-in time. The oh, yeah, check the check-in yeah. time. Yeah. See, like, what I've gone in it. Because we was meant to be there by 8.30, right? And it yeah. was 7.30. So a whole hour before, like, we was meant to go. So we're, I'm rocking my neck, looking outside, looking at the palm trees, you know, like, this is Taking real life. Taking everything Yeah. And the next thing you know now, obviously, you... Who calls the man after the check-in time? One of you two called But between me and Joseph, because Joseph's internet wasn't working, so mm. between him, he logged onto my phone in Cairo to make sure he was able to contact a man via Airbnb now. Yeah. Um, I feel like we should actually put his, he, we should hot him up. I feel we're going to put his picture in and say not to go to this man if you ever come to this country because he don't deserve no customer service. So what happened now was we had a phone, I have the Airbnb app on my phone now, so Joseph sent conversation, he's like, oh, we're arriving. He's keeping him updated that we're arriving at this and that place at this time. Like, um, we're going to wait here for like two hours because I think check-in was like eight o'clock but we arrived there like five in the morning. Four. Four, four, four something in the morning, four, yeah. yeah. So he was like, we're going to wait for like two, three hours. Maybe someone could come pick us up and let us check in a bit early. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Mm. I see him, the man's not replying, not replying. And then at 10, I said, someone told me to go and message this man at this time now. I don't remember, it was seven something. 7.30, I think it was. Mm. I messaged him because it's a half an hour drive from the airport to his whatever accommodation he said he was he was gonna be at. So I messaged him. I said, "Listen, like we're here. Like, is the drive gonna come? Are we gonna make our own way?" I'm very very sorry. Um, I'm not in town. I have to attend a funeral. I said, "What? Stop to be funny. Rest in peace where the person was. If that someone was really dead, but what's that got to do with me?" And I said, "What does this mean? Is there someone else to check us in?" I'm very, very sorry. I'm sorry for the inconvenience. I said, <laughs> you know, if it was Spain, if it was France, if it was anywhere in Europe, I would have been like, oh, well, we'll just book another little hotel and whatnot, get a deposit back, you know? This is Africa. 
So now I'm going keep a word. I'm like, what do you mean to tell me to stop? I'm, I'm going in. I'm going in. I'm like, you, you better ask so her. Like, he's like, oh, I'm away for 10 days. Please contact Airbnb for a refund. Mm. So we're stuck in airport now. This re- this non-existent refund that has not come back to us. Bear in mind, you spend around five, I would say on the whole, average 500 pounds for this accommodation for a month, right? Block booked, do you know what I mean? You've left us stranded in Africa. You left us stranded. You left us stranded. Like, God will actually deal with you as well. I'm actually sending it out. God will deal with you. God will deal, God will deal with you differently. You left us stranded in the airport. People felt so sad for us. They're walking up and down. We're walking up and down, stress, like, mm-hmm. rushing up. I'm feeling nauseous. I'm just feeling weak at this time because I'm starting to pa- not panic. I'm not trying not to panic, but I'm panicking. This is Africa. This is not a joke. This is not Europe. This is not Spain. People don't speak English. Like, if anything happens, we actually have to ask to get deported back to England. That's how I was just thinking. Like, the worst case scenario is we just have to get deported and say, like, can we deport us? And we can never inter- like, return to this country again. Cool. We're walking up and down. People feeling sorry for us. People are like, Console and like, oh, is there anything we could do to help? And so I'm just like, oh, I don't know. Oh, I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Like, we don't know what to do. Like, we're sitting down there. We're actually dumbfounded. Like, um, it's so early on this side of because it's three hours behind. So in England, it's like three in the morning. So we're sitting here panicking. We no, can't. One in the morning. We're three hours ahead. At the time, but at the time we find out, it was like three in the morning because it's around seven o'clock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like three, four in the morning. Yeah. yeah. No one's really awake. People, not even, unless they're people at our age that have insomnia or they've got issues because it's locked down and not really sleeping properly, those are the type of people that are awake. So Gabby's calling her and trying to message her friends back in the UK and some other guy that she met via Instagram and whatnot. Shout out to Abu. I know you're watching this. Shout, Shout out to Viano. Viano. Shout big out to up. Big, big up, up my Tanzanian friend. Come on. I was gonna big up him anyway, but I just said shout out to Abu. Yeah, yeah. But these are my friends. So I was I on said, FaceTime. I said go, I said it's your friend. Can I carry on? You I was can. on FaceTime <laughs> and I was like, Eviano, can you hear me? And obviously it's three, four AM. So I'm like shaking in it with the little internet and they kept cutting off. So every time I'm like, Can you hear me? It like ends. Like, you know the noise, the FaceTime just ended. So then I called again and I was like, Oh, what's going on? He was like, What's going on? And I was like, What do you mean what's going on? I said, We're stranded. He's like, What? And then he started obviously because his cousins from here as well, like, they were together and stuff like that. They were like, oh, like, they were looking for, like, Airbnbs, hotels, like, bringing up different areas on the maps and stuff like that. And we were all just there now, just panicking, and we were just like, what do we do, what do we do? And obviously, some of the, like, areas and stuff like that weren't obviously, like, in our price range or conducive to be living. So it kind of, like, it helped, but we were still, like, at the back of our head was, like, where are we actually laying our head to rest? Do you know what I mean? Mm. And then, I think. Well, I have to talk about what how. Then, obviously, I've got in contact with it, um, an Instagram a YouTuber that's out here, and I said, "I'm just say, look, we're stranded. <laughs> we are stranded." She, she replied back. Shout out to the Black Travelista. Yeah. She replied back to us, and she was like, um, "Where are you guys?" She's just come back from the gym. She's gonna send us her location to the yeah, cab. So, like, we just wanted to cry. We just start. I feel like we start crying at that point because I was just thinking, imagine. We didn't have the support back in England. We didn't allow certain connections to be made before we came here. I don't know what would happen to us. Mm-hmm. So now my well, brother Joseph's going to take along what the. the yeah, but well, I say in in the actual, I have to talk about my experience in the actual in the actual airport. Yeah, go ahead. I thought, say, yeah, yeah, I thought for the most part, um, from touching down to seeing everything, I knew that deep down I knew it was going to be okay because I knew God wouldn't have let, let us come this far, <laughs> come this far <laughs> to turn around. So I was calm. I was relatively calm about it. Um, when I look for food, as you do, just to have something to snack on, give, give us a bit of energy. Um, I didn't want to stress. Definitely, I couldn't lose composure and whatnot. Um, and you just say, say, okay, cool, um, contact this person. What's the, what are they saying? Just checking in with my sisters on what people are saying. I said, okay, cool. Okay, because I knew there was so much I can't, I don't have control over on the situation. Yeah. There's nothing I can actually do. So as opposed to get riled up or use energy, I suppose, you know, let me just, let me just stay still um, and just see what else, what other people are saying in the situation and then take it from there. But uh, generally speaking, I would say, generally speaking, my experience, I was very relaxed. Even I was annoyed, I was more angry than anything, um, but there was like a peaceful type of anger that I had to say, okay, it's happened. What can um, I do to kind of change the situation? What can I do to change the situation? Not much at the moment, mm-hmm. apart from just make sure that I didn't cancel the Airbnb. Because when you request to cancel, you lose money. And then when you request 
to seek um, a refund, you'd be still lose money as well. So we was going through the whole process of making sure that we didn't cancel. So the guy wanted to basically pocket about 70 pounds, which is a great deal of money here, around 70, 90 pounds, which is a great deal of money here, to then make a profit of double booking a apartment, um, the house that, he, that we were initially supposed to be um, staying in. So he probably double booked it and wanted more money from us, even though we did a step foot on the premises. So that was probably just my main focus to make sure I didn't cave in, I didn't rush straight away and then get as much money as I could. I wanted the full amount and I contacted the Airbnb and made sure that we got the full amount. They were on our side. We told them how this is fraud, you know, I speak up the thing and talk about yeah, how it's lawyer. fraudulent. Um, lawyer. This is misrepresentation lawyer, of, <laughs> of what was happening. It's unacceptable, violating their terms and conditions as a host. Um, yeah, and then Airbnb said, okay, we're on it. And we've got to look through it. They looked through it. They probably, they've had access to our chats. So they saw everything was going on. And the time at which I said I've arrived, and the time at which she then said, oh, I can't, I can't um, host you. It was, it was too, not giving us enough leeway to even make another booking. So they understood, and then they gave us a full refund um, about three working days after we touched down. So that was that. Um, I think for the most part, when we left the airport, it was a... It was a struggle to make sure that you didn't, now that we had someone to stay, thanks to the Black Travelista, for a few days to find a property, it was a struggle to make sure that no matter what, we didn't just accept any old price for the cab there. Because on the map, it's a long way away. It's essentially traveling from north to south of London. I say the furthest south, well, I'll say not. Not quite a Brixton. But a little bit further, a little bit just past Brixton. Okay. Like that distance on the map, like is, Balham is, or something. yeah, like the earliest parts of Balham yeah. because it's far. The, like Dar es Salaam is, is probably as big as the whole of southeast of London, the whole of southeast England. I don't know the the, the, the way, place. the way oh, is massive. It's massive. Like, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Have to, we did have to it's massive. Bathroom. So you have tell to me, tell me about the book. Ah, so the book. So, so we're there now, making sure we get a like an Uber XL type of vehicle, the biggest vehicle we can get. So the guy actually tells us about a price, and he quoted us about hundred. Was it eighty five? Ninety five. Ninety five thousand. Thousand Tanzanian tea shillings, which is about, um, which is about twenty nine pounds. Now, for the journey, it's cheap, but relative to the Tanzanian rates, that's too expensive. That's extortionate. Where well, it should be, and it's, it came. That's the first. That, no, he said that by voice. Then he came with the first booklet, which then said, okay, sixty five thousand pounds. So we said, no, that's too expensive. Then he walked away and came with another booklet, which is probably the Tanzanian rate booklet at its highest, and that he quoted us about 45,000 pounds, 50,000 pounds, 45. So he came away with so many different prices, from the first price to the second price, it's basically half the money. <laughs> so um, um, I, I, I really, I think I was probably, I think, my, my, I think Daniel took the lead in that because if anything, I was, not in the mood per se to try and bargain I mean, it down because I, I know, know that from the price that he first quoted to the price that we accepted it, it was 40,000 it was 45,000 but even then it was, it was still a bit high it was still too high you know but you know I remember we going to the Rudy girl do you know what I mean I had a 10 on one time so I listened to him and I said <laughs> we are hungry we are tired you're taking 49 he said okay I said no get in the car and drive okay mm. I didn't really go like that, but I did yeah. tell him that we we're hungry, we're tired, and that's the last price. But mm. we're not, we're not moving, and we agreed on that price. Yeah, and he knew he knew I was being serious. But here, obviously, a lot of the men, the men do that money talk here. Mm. That's one thing I realized. So if it's anything to do with money and negotiation and stuff, females usually stay out of it and come to Thailand, which is a bit hard for me because I guess I'm always negotiating and dealing with money in England, and then I'm just in a corner, <laughs> like not saying anything. And then Joe's looking over at me. I'm trying to. Give him signals. No, no, yes, yes, yes. And trying to look like it's obviously him leading it, but then it's obviously me and Gabby. Between me and Gabby and all of us as a group, we're actually mm. making a group effort. But it, 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 it comes like I have to. We have to kind of say what we want. It's kind of be done to him, and he's gonna to have to come and kind so of. Help. From then, um, the, the journey down there, it was hot. It was raining. It was, it was like from about three o'clock, four o'clock, and then from four thirty onwards, it's like it was a dark room, and then you know God just put a light switch on, and outside was bright. That's how it was, the, yeah. the shift between the time and when the light, the sun rose, it just, bing, it's light outside. What, um, what, 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 what? So, <laughs> it was a thing where we were all tired. We haven't really slept, especially after being woken up on a plane. Um, no fault to anybody, it's just, just amazing. So. 
but I slept. But at the same time, even on the journey, I was in the front seat and I couldn't sleep because I need to make sure I know where it is we're going. This and see, because I was in and out of sleep. So I'm, I'm there, I hit my head a couple of times. Or to, you looking had outside. some silly quilt on your head. I don't know why you put that red quilt. What, oh, I, I, think, I, I thought I ditched that. No, no I, I you put it in a suitcase. Like, a, like yeah. some Superman cloak. Come out of the <laughs> I'll, see, I'll see where the thing is. What's that? <laughs> the thing you had in your head. The bloody quilt cool thing. Yeah. You had on your head, you're walking out of yeah, the cab, like it. this, trying to check if the, the roads are dead in the road. Because it was raining. <laughs> if it's raining, you need to cover your head top. That's too, some torrential to rain. Oh, so we're heading down. Um, and it's funny enough because now I realise the roads, being here, I realise the roads that we took to go up to the um, northern part of um, Dar es Salaam by the coastal area where um, the Black Travel East stays. So I understood the roads now, but back then I had to keep an eye out because I didn't want to get lost. Um, it's very hard when you're tired and try to keep an maybe, eye out. Maybe I made you like, you know what I mean? Like, you understand, you did a good yeah. job. Yeah, but I didn't want to fall asleep. There's so many times my eyes were like, just, just there, nearly closed. I definitely wasn't asleep because I was, having a, I was getting shaken up out of the back. <laughs> I was getting shaken up so out of the back. So it is a lot. Um, so getting there and also getting to grips with ways and the map and how sometimes when you're in the vehicle, it will just jump and you miss the turn and you have to double back in yourself. So trying to find a location as well. Things aren't clear all the time on the roads. It's, I feel like here, yeah. la um, landmarks, you have to kind of know where mm. something is near it so you can give them the best direction because people only go by if there's a certain shop there or if there's like a hospital and stuff. Do yeah. you know what I mean? So it's or like bus station. a bus station. So you have to kind of tell them the nearest kind of landmark and then from there kind of know where you're working around with. And that's what... Yeah, what we've done and even though the landmark we were given it wasn't very present, it was very hidden. But the instructions that we got given were clear, but we just missed, um, I missed one of the turns. The driver missed it, and then I missed it, um, the actual sign that um, we needed to follow. Um, so I suppose we're going left, we went straight down to the right, and it went down a road where I was even surprised that the car was able to get back up from. Um, I thought we had to lug all the lug luggage out from there and make our way on foot, but um, thankfully, the car was able to do a U-turn and find its way back up the steep road. Um, that was that was crazy. I thought, yeah, this is it. Take the food, take the luggage out of the car yeah, and yeah. start walking. Um, but from the moment we touched down, um, I was able to go to the toilet to brush our teeth, to, to wash our face. It was a sigh of relief. Um, so, yeah, we did actually cry. I feel like we had moments of everyone would just start crying at different points because we start just feeling homesick. We just start feeling like. We question our decision because of how much stuff we went through just at the, from the airport to the mm. time we was there and then it's like our christmas was not going to be christmas and obviously we don't even celebrate christmas like that but as a general kind of family situation he wasn't with the rest of our family it's just like a lot everything was, was just kind lot. of caving in at one time yeah, do you know what i mean and i think i um probably in terms of my, i probably it took me longer to process to process probably to show it i'm willing to show it because i knew that I can't, I can't come. As a guy, I could, I couldn't like. There wasn't, there wasn't a space for it to happen at that particular moment of time. So it was more like, okay, okay, autopilot. You're on survival mode. Where okay, there's, there, you rest when you're dead type of situation internally. That's how I felt um, when going through the, the transition from coming in and then making sure that okay, we sat down, we dropped our bags. But on that same day, there wasn't really time to rest because she was heading out. Um, to go to the market. So we probably had maybe um, one or two hours to chill and then she was going to the market. So we didn't chill for one or two hours. We went straight It was away. a half an hour thing. We there. dropped our stuff and then we said we're going out. We yeah. went out. Okay. Yeah, but I understand we kind of mess. If yeah, because it's her, if we're sticking to her schedule and she's allowed us to stay in her, um, in her property. So it's like wherever June she jumps to, we have to jump to it. Yeah. So I mean, coming from there, um, heading down, speaking to people that were living in the big. Um, house, many different apartments within it. Um, talked about experiences, what we've gone through, and um, probably finding some comfort in sharing with other people that understood us as well and understood the English we were speaking. Um, and so there wasn't a language barrier, which was good at that moment, present time, because if there was, it probably would have been a lot harder um, in terms of us being able to confine the people and people to give us tips and advice and encouragement. So heading from Oh, what? What's wrong to talk about that? Um, like going down to the market, coming back probably ending our first day. Okay. Yeah. 
So when we head down to the market, <laughs> it was the first time. I think it was a. Uh, we went down to Karaoke Market. Karaoke. Ah, oh, so Karaoke Market. Yeah. I'll say. Land of the. This is the last. <laughs> Nothing ever happened to us. I just guess it's very hustle and bustle. <laughs> no, I was the hustle and bustle. Much. Like for as a, as a, you wouldn't want to. I think for myself, it was a thing where you wouldn't want to go there. It's fine. I think as a guy, it's fine to go there by yourself. But when you're rolling with your sisters, it's very. It's it's a lot more hostile. It's a lot more hostile because one, people don't know you. Two, people don't tend to care as well um, about the nature of respect and the nature of probably just keeping your eyes on your tasks that you're doing as opposed to staring at your sisters. So from, from my point of view, it was more of, I had to learn to adapt, to accept that, okay, I'm definitely outnumbered. <laughs> well, you know I'm a gunman. Yeah, I know you are, innit? but still. Trust still, me, that's what everybody is. Even, 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 still, even then, still. Trust me. Still, um, Have you heard about this one, Seven? Have you heard about this one, Seven? <laughs> oh, right. It was, it was definitely a new experience for myself because I've never had to... Be so defensive phobia. Yeah, de like defensive, territorial, and on such, yeah. even more so on high alert. It, it was just, it felt unnecessary. That's how much um, I had to pay attention. It's true, like, it felt so unnecessary, like, as, as if I didn't, like, I didn't deserve this. <laughs> Almost, but um, I had to adapt, I had to accept it. Um, nothing happened, you know, with the grace of God. Otherwise, if anything did happen, probably just get my ass deported again. So, uh, Rebuke. Yeah, but thank God nothing happened. It was fine. It was very much the hustle and the bustle of Black Friday or Christmas time, Christmas Eve, Oxford, Oxford Street, and just imagine both sides of the road, and there's one lane of tra traffic in between, and just having both sides of the shops just drawn right close up to each other. That's what I can explain Karaoke Market to be. Oh yeah, well, yeah. Um, so guys, <laughs> <laughs> that was our journey and our story time to Tanzania and come on now, we've actually practiced this <laughs> to out of Babylon. Babylon. Thank you guys. <laughs> so, I'm actually not doing another story time. So if there's not enough information, personally message us on the SOB daily Instagram, mm -hmm. email us at sob.daily at protimail.com. Or shoot any one of us a message, which you probably know us personally. That's how you've been kind of brought into this situation or page. And we feel free to ask your questions because I'm using my phone and I can't export all this data. <laughs> so, thanks for tuning in. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Till next time. Till next time. Hopefully, I can export. Straight out of Babylon. Straight out of Babylon. Straight out of Babylon.